calling. So position on the bike. And what I found difficult is people who were giving me advices were not my size. Oh yeah. So what they told me yeah. was totally wrong. Yeah. <laughs> 120 to two meters, yeah, big difference. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of people who love to give advice as well when they actually don't know what they're doing. I love those guys, amazing. They tell you what to do, but they don't even know how to ride. And it's uh, always be careful. We'll take the advice of the people who actually know what they do. What they, and especially get a guy who's almost similar than you as well. Like this, uh, the techniques and the tips are making sense. Because uh, we have a lot of want to be as well. We watch a lot of videos and they're going to teach you how to ride the bikes without even this go on YouTube as well. When I look some videos on YouTube and people try to teach you how to ride the bikes and I find out that that guy is not a mountain biker <laughs> and he's basically a guy who was building uh, websites before. Yeah, be careful, <laughs> be careful on that. But um, yeah, try to get advice from people who are professional or people who know how to explain themselves or actually make sense of what they're saying. And as them um, to, um, to do an example in front of you, it's uh, a lot easier as well. True. Uh, but uh, not everybody is lucky like I am to live in a place where you have uh, the best mountain bikers in the world, mm -hmm. like yourself. <laughs> and if I'm, if I'm on my own, uh, obviously, yeah, YouTube is the first place I'm going to go to. But is it worth it to go to pay for camp? Am I going to learn a lot more two days going to a CG photo camp than 10,000 hours of uh, YouTube videos? Is it really that much more, that much better to be in person with a coach? Those camps are working really good. The hard stuff for me is I have to go everywhere in the world and it's a big logistic to make, you know, I need to know the trail, I need to come earlier to see the trail I'm going to bring people in, I need to do evolution on the people to see what technique they have, if they're good or good enough or not good enough. Uh, a lot of different levels as well. But yeah, yeah, but that's that's your problem, not mine. No, no, no. As a learner. No, I'm a learner and that's why I need to be able to talk to everyone and this is my deal. The thing is, I can take only 20 people with the two uh, teachers and I need to show, they need to execute and I fix the problems they have, if they have. But uh, I figure out then um, it's better for me than I show techniques into an application or I do like a CG fun camp. I, I, instead of you coming to me for the CG fun camps, I will bring the stuff to you. And like this it will be easier for me uh, to correct the people when I receive videos, I can do auto teaching, uh, I can do teaching into the video I receive and I could be more personal and I can bring more than 20 people a day because that's the problem I have. Uh, like in Italy we have to refuse 80 people and it's only two day camp you know and in two day camps it's so much you can learn and it's uh, and it's uh, sorry the phone and it's um, Sorry the, dog. Oh, the dog. <laughs> Sorry the dog. And um, yeah, like this I can bring more people, I can be more focused and uh, it's no limited and it, it will not limit in um, if I go to France to French people, mm -hmm. if I go to England to English people, you know, it can be all worldwide. And that's what I want to develop. Yeah, that's going to be a very innovative program that's never seen before. It's totally brand new what you're going to do. And it's a kind of a hybrid solution between a passive video on YouTube and a live camp with all the logistics and all the problems and the price, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a yeah. price uh, as well, but obviously it's going to be a lot cheaper than going into a country when you have to pay for hotel, food and teaching. That's a lot better. But the feedback is so valuable. I'll find myself, my learning curve improves so much when I get feedback. If I figure out, figure things on my own, it takes. I got, I'm gonna figure it out. Yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot more time. Though. Yeah, a, yeah. a lot of crashes. I know about crashes. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> going to learn. I mean, you learn from crashing as well. Yeah. Then it's going to be a lot more crashing. I'm going to avoid it. you to crash and learn a lot quicker and give you straight to the point. That's a lot better. That's why you want to have an old professional. Mm. trying to explain you how to do and where to do and how to do and everything you have to do and know about biking. 
and uh, that thing is the future now. Because I found it easy to okay, get on the bike, go on a bike park, do some trails, blue, red, whatever. But then there is that point where you are stuck. There is that limit of riding on your own and trying to figure it out on your own. And that's the main problem. I, I found that there is no real help out there besides if you are friends or if you watch a video. There is just nothing out there. There is nobody really teaching mountain bike the way people want to learn. And you don't know if it's right as well because you exactly. don't know who is this guy. This guy, okay, okay, this guy is going to teach me how to ride a bike, but who is this guy really? And you're going to make a, a research on the guy who is teaching you how to ride a bike and you're going to find out there is no one. You have no background about biking. You have no, I mean, he is no uh, legend. Then uh, that's what I want to do, the scan, the CG fan camp, straight into the net like this. I can talk to the people who will be, um, uh, who have um, a membership with me because I can talk to them uh, right away. I can uh, do a Skype uh, once a month. Uh, I can receive video and do auto critics on the videos. Uh, like I can critic the videos into the guy straight to his writing, not into another people writing. It would be his writing, and uh, it's so many, so many benefits really. And after you can go and try uh, by yourself everything I've been telling you or teaching you. All right, before the before I'm going to change because it's hot. <laughs> I'm tired of wearing uh, the caporal. Yeah, Dubai, Dubai. Can I drink a little bit as well? Yeah, you can drink. It's your channel, you can do everything you want. Yeah, yeah. Aperitif, <laughs> aperitif time. So now, between the choices of borrowing a bike from a friend, renting a bike, uh, buying a used bike, or buying a brand new bike, or what else, uh, stealing a bike, <laughs> or getting my dad's bike. Um, I mean, so many choices. You have to start with what you have, right? Oh, I mean, Everything is good, in, you know, it all depends where you're coming from, what you have in your pocket, and uh, what is... Uh, is the money the first problem? The well, first I mean, mountain biking is not cheap. Obviously, if you have a free bike there, might as well use it. If someone give you a bike or your dad or whatever, just use it, it's better. Just do your skills on that. When you know that's what you like to do, yeah, maybe you can think of saving money and go and get a bike. Obviously, if you have tons of money, why you will not go and get yourself a great bike? Yeah. Does that make a difference to buy a uh, 1,000? For me, it makes sense to start with what you have. But if you have the money or you're lucky enough to have your dad giving you a bike or whatever who is really good, yeah, it's, it's amazing. But uh, definitely those bikes today make you just a better rider. It's good to have good skills and start with something not so good in the beginning because you learn from the hard way, mm -hmm. the hardcore way. I learned that way. I learned on the hard tail, when you make a mistake, you pay the price. Yeah. Today you can learn with the best bike, but um, what people it's, say imp it's important, it's important, I think, to start with something rough because yeah. at least for a little month or two, if, even if you know you have the money, just to know if you like mountain biking, first of all. And, uh, you know, just to fight a little bit more. But uh, obviously, I uh, know a lot of people now who just ride enduro and they have the money to buy the best bike and they go and buy the best bike. And we need those guys. They're good. And it's, I mean, they think they will be a better rider right away. But uh, I have to say, then people like, uh, like people like me right now, even if you're a professional, when I jump on my bike, I feel like a better rider. No, because it's me. It's because the bike makes me a better rider. I have to say it, I'm sorry. The suspension I use, the Santa Cruz high tower bike I use on the 29 make me a better rider. And uh, It's not a hype. Com better components do make you a better rider. It, it just works. It works. It's not it works. We're it's not, not in uh, 99 when yeah. everything was the same. I mean, today with the technology of carbons and light bikes, you can move the bikes around a lot easier. They're stiffer, they're re a lot more uh, reactive. Uh, I mean, it's, it's amazing. So basically what you're telling me is try out a little bit of everything before deciding... You know what you like. Because your friends 
doing they're doing downhill yeah no try, try what you like i mean yeah. uh, I mean, a lot of people, a friend of mine before I started mountain biking was doing cross country or road biking and I tried and I didn't like it because why? It was boring for me. It was nothing to jump and I like to be dirty. I like to go in the mud and all this was not existing and I didn't want to jump. I didn't want to climb for three hours hard, like 180 uh, RPM to be able to do a little run of 30 seconds downhill. No, I wanted to go downhill a lot more than I was climbing. Then that's why I liked the downhill. And now we find a new sport was like you climb a little bit, actually mm. quite a lot, but you get a lot of run down and you do mm. a lot of stages, but you climb for a good reason because you know you're going to have a timing and they're going to take your time on the downhill side. And that's what I like enduro. But uh, yeah, you need to figure out what you like to do. Or if you like to go only in the bike park, if you like mm -hmm. to take only the lift and do big runs, then you would take more a downhill bike, you know, or like a more like a free rider 160 centimeters uh, suspension, something like comfortable for a downhill side. But like you said before, where you live matters a lot. Mm -hmm. I know, Why? I didn't know downhill existed until I saw the World Cup in 2008 or yeah. 2009. So, first bike I got was a cross country yeah but I forgot I lived in Andorra where climbing is just uh, hard <laughs> so you need you need good gearing it's like everything you cannot show up here on the road bike and showing up with a no more gearing you need compact here you need compact because Pyrenees are like this same for enduro riding you cannot showing up you cannot show up here with a 38 on the front you're going to have a hard time you would push your bike all over the place you know and uh, yeah, what, like you say, when you leave here, before you need you needed three bikes. You need a downhill mm -hmm. bike, you need uh, the first generation of the, of the enduro bike, kind of trail riding, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, a hardtail to go to a pump track or a BMX track. Mm -hmm. But now with all those bikes, you know, either you prefer to do a um, bike park, then you will use a downhill bike because you will break less stuff, or like a, a big size enduro biking. Uh, means like 160, but you know on the climb you will not be as quick as a, um, a smaller travel bike, expect if you have a lookout. Then you need to figure out what you will do with your bike. If you re ride a lot of the trails, if you will do a little bit of cross country with it, if you will do just enduro, or just if you do bike park. And then um, now we have a segment and a bike for everything, you know. But do you, do you believe that really enduro bikes can do everything? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm 100% I'm for sure. Like, let's take my position. I'm sponsored by Santa Cruz. I have all the bikes, and uh, I ride uh, my DH bikes because I have the World Cup track. I ride my Enduro bike 27.5, uh, my Nomad, because it's a bigger travel bike and I can do a lot more run. And uh, But while I ride the most, and the most, and almost all the time without thinking, is uh, my high tower because it's enough suspension. A carbon fiber bike, 29 inch wheels, and what I like 29 is because they make my riding a lot smoother. I'm less aggressive, and the good thing is I can just climb or just take the lift or whatever. If I have to climb 1,000 meter, I can climb with that bike, you know, and I'm not going to suffer. That's what I like, and uh, I think a bike now, a good bike now, like they know how to do you can do everything with it and that's what i do right now i can go bike park and sometimes you know if i want to have a little bit more comfort i will use my rear suspension uh right now i ride a topaz because it is a is an air suspension from dvo but uh, i will i will use a, a spring one but uh yeah detail, yeah details this uh, this detail is important because it seems like in the mountain biking industry everybody goes towards what's well known or the most well-known brands well in fact uh, you're talking about DVO and I broke my rock shock and I stole one of your shock <laughs> from the bike and it was just a revelation it has nothing I mean it's just a day and night well those baby going out of the usual path yeah trying it is people who work hard beside only two big companies yes. obviously but it's hard for them you know to I mean, the business is owned by two big companies and uh, they're fighting against each other, but, but it is rooms. It is room for the people. Yeah. They have big marketing budgets. So yeah, marketing that's... budget when people don't and uh, they make good stuff as well. That's why, I mean, I have a long relationship with DVO. They used to 
to work, I uh, used to work with them before and I really liked what I was doing and uh, when I showed up with this new company and it's like, hey Cedric, we're going to make this, this and I mean, I took a risk, I'm like, hey, I'm going with you guys, whatever, but we better do a good job. To me, who doesn't know anything about anything, I felt the difference. It's like the first time I tried some new the tires I'm using now, I felt the difference and with the shock, what I felt is, for the first time, I felt like it was the same shock throughout the entire run. Well, before I was no over eating. Sometimes it was kicking me back yeah. you know, in the butt. Sometimes it was just like um, diving too much. Well, then you have to put more air, and all of a sudden <laughs> the top of the travel don't work. <laughs> well, it just opened my eyes that you have so many good brands <laughs> that deserve a lot more attention that we give them. It's all about money. If you don't have marketing. That's why it's good to give a chance to those people, you know. Yeah. Mountain biking is so good for this because you have so many little brands who make great stuff, but you never figure out, never heard about them. That's why it's good to go to those bike shows to see what's going on, and because it's so easy to just follow what your friend just bought or just keep what is coming on the bike, you know. But I see a lot of people, more and more people, coming to. Uh, to shops and say hey, I want to have a Santa Cruz high tower and I want to have a DVO fork and a Topaz rear shock I want to get those wheels and I want to have a, a aluminium and a stamp and handlebar from a PP or whatever and uh, this is good because um, um, people are educated now on products and they know what it is on the market and uh, some people go and make a research and uh, they like to give opportunities to different tires or different this or different on that and uh, we, we figure out that a lot of people now, I mean they come with money as well, we can do a la carte bike, but a la carte bike is going to be a lot more expensive than a, a complete bike. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like um, it is people who are really famous to make a really complete bike for cheap money. Yeah. But sometimes people buy those bikes, sell all the other parts, keep the frames and put all the, uh, all the parts because that's the only way to get a cheaper bike and they can make money with all the pieces. What, 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 uh, what was really annoying to me is you buy one of those bikes with the fork that supposedly is it says walk up whatever but in fact it's a downgraded model it just has the high compression but not the low compression yeah no high speed well, and low speed well yeah low speed so yeah. it, it does have the same name but you you're getting ripped off because it's just this cheaper version of the <laughs> <laughs> but when you buy the bike and you don't know anything you're like, oh it's here it's I all get about the marketing <laughs> brother all about this marketing. The, sticker. <laughs> the sticker seems good but in fact, no, it's shit. Sorry, it's a bit... <laughs> yeah. Okay, so your advice, if uh, to summarize, is go out of the beaten path. Try if you have something, things. go with it. If you don't have anything, buy something affordable because you don't know if you like mountain biking or not. If you have tons of money, go for the Santa Cruz, full carbon bike, just, just go big. You're buying the Ferrari of mountain biking. And you're gonna look good too. And you're going to look badass. For sure you will get the girls at the bar. If not, start with what you have. And after buy Santa Cruz, but first, make sure you like what you're doing and um, go for it. But like I say, if you have the money, why not, you know? Don't feel guilty. Just go buy the best. I totally... Hey, I have nothing against that. You're going to get some haters for sure. Look, that guy, you don't know how to ride a bike and you have the best bike online. Hey, whatever, you know, life, life is unfair sometimes and uh, it's okay. Do you know what you need to answer when people tell you, hey, why are you buying a bike that costs the same as a car? Because I can. No, because <laughs> I don't need to change my car. Ah, perfect. <laughs> well, this is part about, as well, this is part about um, priorities. People have different priorities in life. Uh, you have a priority in your life, I have a different priority in my life, and you need to respect that. That is okay. For me, as long as I see people stoked, it's okay. I really get pissed off when people are cocky and arrogant because they have something better than you. But this is another story. But mountain biking is expensive. Mountain biking is really expensive. Some people say, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop uh, motocross because uh, it's too expensive and they're going to get into mountain biking and they found Same. out that it is as expensive. At least you don't have to pay gas, but uh, <laughs> the gas is basically the bars you're going to buy uh, or the gels, okay. but uh, uh, don't expect to be cheaper than motorcycle, but you'll be uh, 
Uh, I'm the Iron Man 3. Uh, you'll be, yeah. uh, and, uh, the you'll be green. <laughs> and the feeling is unique. What and the feeling of biking is definitely, I didn't see any other sport who can give you as much pleasure on mountain biking, you know. That's uh, definitely the key of why I ride mountain bike and why I still ride mountain bike after racing for 20 years, because mountain biking is unique. It is what it is. Yeah.